Shalom, my king. Shalom, Kohalo, Yahawa, Bahashim, Yahweh, Shah, Bahashim, Rakaha, Kudash. I want to send double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Much peace, love, and salutations to you. I came out there pushing the words, considering your truth. This is the brother Ariala. On today's lesson, what I want to focus in on is the fourth seed of spiritual greatness, the, the, the fourth spiritual seed of greatness, and that is wisdom. You know, this is a big one. This is one that I feel like. Um, it's like the shining star of being a part of Great Millstone. You know, um, the process by which the apostles and elders have kind of put forth what, 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 we, what we would call a curriculum as far as learning the doctrine. If you are truly uh, locked in in the spirit, um, there's so much access to not just information, but association and growth and really learning to become a man of the Lord, you know, growing from a child to a man that, you know, this this particular area, you know, there's really no excuse, you know, because of the way the spirit has kind of led the apostles and elders to set things up. <clears throat> you do have like a real technical way of learning, but then also there's this kind of free flowing way that's not so rigid that the apostles have kind of uh, dealt with bringing uh, young men along to learn the scripture. And so I just want to talk about that spiritual seed of wisdom, its importance, and just some mindset things here. Uh, Lord willing, this is edifying. And uh, hopefully you bros can uh, take from this. Now, here in the etymology, the word wisdom, it says knowledge, learning, experience. Knowledge, learning, experience. Okay? From wiz, or see the word wise, and dumb. Um, you can, we could go to that, but I'll let you bros do that as you want to. Uh, judicial sentence serving as a precedent. Um, let's see. Let's, let's go down. It says prudent, self control so called because they usually appear ages 17 through 25. Right? And so, saying all of that, as I was reading in this book, Seeds of Greatness, one of the things that was mentioned, really good quote, it says, Wisdom is honesty and knowledge applied through experience. Honesty and knowledge applied through experience so it's developing a, a a mindset of integrity and applying data and information through experience which 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 creates what we what we would consider uh what's called prudence now in the scripture the bible talks about wisdom it's what it's the chief thing that you should always kind of develop and so i just want to kind of touch on that here in proverbs the, the book of proverbs chapter 16 Verse 16, it says, how much better is it to get wisdom than gold and to get understanding rather to be chosen than silver? OK, the highway of the upright is to, is to depart from evil. He that keeps his way preserves his soul. You see that? And so there's this always this with wisdom. There's, there's this honesty and uprightness and righteousness that comes along with it. This is what's going to produce immortality. Righteousness of the most high makes one immortal okay and so we're always chasing that relationship with the most high through wisdom right through gaining that understanding proverbs 4 and 7 says wisdom is the principal thing therefore get wisdom and with all thy getting get understanding okay and so we talk about getting wisdom how does one go by getting wisdom is what i want to talk about today how do we how do we enhance our wisdom a few things you know here, 2 Timothy 2 and 15 classic, study to show thyself approved unto the most high, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. And so by, by studying, by reading, by the, the, the process of leisure, by getting into these scriptures, studying these scriptures, there's three main, you're listening to your videos, you're reading the word, reading, you know, it's funny, this morning, uh, Elder Yashawamba woke up, you know, and he was just admonishing the camp. Hey, let's make sure we're reading. Let's make sure we're studying to show ourselves approved, right? Because that's going to give you the data and information necessary so you can apply it to your daily life, right? We read, uh, uh, we read these things in the scriptures so that we can go and apply it to our daily lives. And as we accumulate more experience while utilizing this knowledge, what do we do? We become more effective, we become wiser and, and, and more efficient. And this is extremely important. We read the story of the Bereans here in Acts, the 17th chapter, and the 11th verse. 
11 verse, it says, These were more noble than those in Thessalonica, in that they received the word with all readiness of mind and searched the scriptures daily whether those things were so. And this is talking about the uh, Jews in Berea. They were ready, man. Okay? They were ready, they, and, their, and, their, and their mind was ready to what? Learn. Are you approaching these videos with a, a brand mindset? Are you approaching listening to these different videos and the class sessions and going out to the camps with a mindset of a brand, right? Ser searching the scriptures daily, really taking notes as you read and, and watch and listen so you can go back and review it, quizzing yourself, going over these things. This is what's going to increase your aptitude in this thing. And that's something we're going to talk about in a minute, okay? So one of the key aspects of getting on the level is Reading. It's, it's just a process of studying through reading. Scripture says here in um, Sirach, the 38th chapter, and the 24th verse, it says, The wisdom of a learned man cometh by opportunity of leisure, and he that have little business shall become wise. How can he get wisdom that holdeth the plow, and that glorieth in the gold, and driveth oxen, and is occupied in their labors, and whose talk is of bullocks? Right. And so if you occupied in a whole bunch of other things, if you're not prioritizing time out of your uh, week to make sure that you can consistently read, you're not going to be gaining much wisdom. Right. You got to have the opportunity of leisure. You got to make sure that you're carving out of your calendar time to really sit down, study and read. All of us have to be mindful of that. I know I do. We all have busy lives. We all have different things that we got going on. But this ministry is what? Is it the pri it's a priority. It's the chief priority of our life. And so whatever um, is a priority takes precedence. Right? Whatever you prioritize, you're going to give time to and you're going to give your resources to. And one of the key things is being able to carve out time out of your week to make sure you're consistently reading. This is for brothers that have been in the truth for a while as well. Right. Not just for new brothers. OK. This is for men that have been here. We all have to make sure that we're filling our cup up consistently. All right. And so we're gaining more and more wisdom as we have more life experience. It's compact. It's a compound effect. OK. Right. So that's one way. Understanding. Studying your show. Uh, the show yourself approved. OK. What you're listening to. What you're reading. The third way is who you associate with. One of the key ways, and I know I can speak for me and Elder Yashua Wamba and several of the other kind of younger, quote unquote, elders. One of the things that was vital to us gaining more knowledge, wisdom, and understanding was getting around the apostles and elders, listening to those videos. But personal association with the apostles and elders changed my life dramatically. It changed the way I viewed certain things. It helped me understand decision making and having a prudent mind, things that I was naive to and that I, oh, I didn't think about that. Because of their experience and their tenure in this thing, when you ask them questions, when there are situations that pop up, when there's things that go down, their ability to discern and, and, and see things not just one or two steps ahead, but five, six, seven steps ahead, it was just like, oh, dang. Didn't think about that. So counseling and getting around the elders and apostles are, is extremely important. If you have access to old videos, if you have access to the, to the elder videos, you want to sit and you want to read. And, I mean, you want to listen. Gaining that experience is going to help you have be more wise. Right? So now, in this chapter here in uh, Sirach, the sixth chapter is talking about wisdom. And um, I'm going to start at the 30. Second verse, it says, my son, if thou wilt, thou shalt be taught. If thou wilt apply thy mind, thou shalt be prudent. Now, we talked about what wisdom is. Wisdom is honesty and knowledge applied through experience. Right? So it says, if thou wilt apply thy mind, thou shalt be prudent. If, if thou love to hear, it shall receive understanding. If thou, if thou bow thine ear, thou shalt be wise. Stand in the multitude of the elders and cleave unto him that is wise. Be willing to hear every godly discourse and let not the parables of understanding escape thee. And if thou seest a man of understanding, get thee betimes unto him and let thy foot wear the steps of his door. 
Let thy mind be upon the ordinances of the Lord and meditate continually in his commandments. He shall establish thine heart and give thee wisdom at thine own desire. So when you when you cleave unto the elders, when you cleave unto the apostles, when you sit at their feet, when you stay at their door, when you, as much as you can get around and listen, what's going to happen? It's going to increase your level of understanding. The things that they're continuously talking about, the discourse that they're having, is going to increase your own personal level of wisdom. Because you're gleaning from their experiences. You're taking the guidance and mentorship that they're giving the things that they've been through, the situations that they've been in, that you're going through now. They've been through it 20, 30 times over. And now you can have a more prudent mind at the decisions that you make. Because you know, okay, this is something the apostle talked about. This is something one of the elders talk about. I'm going to make sure that I watch out for this. I'm going to make sure to do this instead. Right? It allows you to apply knowledge in life at a better, more efficient rate when you get around the apostles and elders. Having that association is critical. And, you know, call Halal Yahweh Shai, the way that things have been set up, you have elders, you have heads of camps, you have men that have had tenure, 10 years, 15 years, 20 years, 25 years, 30 years of experience in the truth that you can get around and you can glean from their experiences uh, and, and take it as your own, right? Iron sharpened of iron, as the scriptures say. That increases your level of wisdom, right? Now, going to Wisdom of Solomon, we're going to go to the 8th chapter. We're going to go to the 8th verse, and we're going to read down. It says, if a man desire much experience, she know of things of old, right? Talking about wisdom. And conjureth aright what is to come. She knoweth the subtilities of speeches and can expound dark sentences. She foreseeth signs and wonders and the events of seasons and times. So when you gain wisdom, when you gain knowledge, wisdom, and understanding, you see things. You have a more prudent mind. You put pieces together quicker, faster. Right? Things you, you might see something. You know that action will produce this fruit down the line, whether good or bad. And so you can make the right decisions. You know, saying something in this type of season, in this type of time is not wise. It will create this. You can say the same thing in a different season and time, and you know it's going to produce a totally different effect. You know, I can tell this brother this thing according to what he did like this, but the brother that might have done something very similar because you have wisdom, you don't speak to him the same way because you are able to discern the spirit. You're able to see, you're able to understand subtilities in different ways that things go. Right? Verse 9 says, Therefore, I purpose to take her uh, to me to live with me, knowing that she would be a counselor of good things and a comfort in cares and grief. For, for her sake, I shall have estimation among the multitude and honor with the elders, though I be young. So over time, even I was, I'll just use this as an example. Over time, when we first came into the truth, man, <laughs> and I'm not saying we still don't get corrected and everything like that, but it's, it's definitely um, a lot less over time. Our estimation among the multitude, our honor amongst the apostles and elders has changed. Why? Because we've personally gone through things. We've had to overcome. We've had to show ourselves to have wisdom over time. Right? And it's the same way with everybody in the truth. The more work you put in, the more you keep your honesty and integrity in this thing, the more, the closer you'll become with those who have kind of walked that walk beforehand as well. Right? Verse 11 says, I shall be found of a quick conceit, consent and judgment and shall be admired in the sight of men. Brother's going to want to know um, what you think. Brother's going to want to know how you feel about certain situations because they trust your decision-making skills. When I hold my tongue, they shall bide my leisure. When I speak, and when I speak, they shall give good ear unto me. If I talk much, they shall lay their hand upon their mouth. Moreover, by the means if, if by the means of her, I shall obtain immortality and leave behind me an everlasting memorial to them that come after me. Right? So the path of wisdom is going to lead to what? It's going to lead to immortality, right? A legacy that the Most High shall bless. Because that's the promise that he made. That's the promise that he made. Right. Sorry about that. And so when we are going through this process of 
learning to read, like reading, gaining more information, having more experiences, going through things. We're sitting in the midst of the uh, of the apostles and the elders. We're gleaning from the experiences that they have, but we're also going through things ourselves. We're also traveling and and going through this journey ourselves too. You know what I mean? It's very very important that we understand that um, you know we're still learning ourselves as we go. Okay, so you're taking from the discourses and everything and you're building, right? Like, Sirach 8 and um, 6 says, Dishonor not a man in his old age, for even some of us wax old. Rejoice not over thy greatest enemy being dead, but remember that uh, we die all. Despise not the discourse of the wise, but acquaint thyself with their proverbs. For of them thou shalt learn instruction and, shall, and, and how to serve great men with ease. Miss not the discourse of the elders, for they also learned of their fathers. And of them thou shalt learn understanding and to give answer as need requireth. Okay? So we want to be mindful of this. I know brothers, some brothers want to be loners, some brothers want to be away, but the association with the with the with the elders is extremely important. And also just associating when when I'm talking about also the, the, the heads of B camps, getting around them as well sometimes too is very, very important so you can kind of glean from that knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. If you have a, a situation where your camp has a has a kind of like a rank and file, you have the opportunity to be around the officers within the camp, you want to glean from that. So the brothers that are just crossed over for one or two years, you want to be around those brothers that have been around for four or five years. Those brothers that have been around for four or five years, you want to be around those brothers that have been around from eight to ten years. The brothers that have been around for eight to ten years, you want to be around the men that have been around for 15, 20, 30 years, man. And, you know, in, in, in it's all it's kind of a back and forth thing. We're all growing into this thing and we're becoming a more efficient body as we associate and learn from one another. OK, extremely important, extremely important. OK, taking that right. Proverbs 18 and 15, the heart of the prudent getteth knowledge and the ear of the wise seeketh, seeketh knowledge. A man's gift make it room for him and bringing him before great men. I ask you this question right now. This is the second point that I wanted to make. Do you know your gift? Do you know where you're apt at? What is your aptitude? You know, I'm going to pull it up. I'm going to pause real quick. What is your aptitude? Now, when we look at the word aptitude, it's, aptitude is a natural ability to do something, suitability or fitness, right? It says an aptitude is a component of a competence to do a certain kind of work at a certain level, right? So we have different gifts or we have different aptitudes we're apt to do certain things that the most high has kind of blessed us with it's important for us to identify those things you know it's important for us to know okay hey the most high has really kind of blessed me with this gift do you have a gift of maybe uh, speaking of hebrew some brothers have a gift within prophecy certain brothers have different types of, of gifts of teachings or administrations like me i'm really learning how um administration i really love doing that i really love the administrative side of things kind of like the back end side of making sure things are on point and good and, and doing this and doing that and working with brothers one-on-one -on -one and doing this type of stuff i love that type of stuff. I, that, that's my calling it's one of my callings so for me to lean into that gift is important to so, so i'm providing the highest level of function or efficiency within the ministry we all, we all, we want to make sure that we're fortifying our our weaknesses, that we're making our weaknesses stronger by teaching and being around other brothers and learning. But hey, you want to prioritize your strengths, you do, okay? Now here in the book of uh, Sirach thirty four, I just wanted to read um, what is that? Verse nine: A man that have tra have traveled knoweth many things, and he that have much experience will declare wisdom. He that hath no experience knoweth little, but he that hath traveled is, is full of prudence. When I have traveled, I saw many things. I understood more than I can express. I was oft times in danger of death, yet I was delivered because of these things. The spirit of, of those that fear the Lord shall live, for their hope is in him that serveth him. Now, the whole point of me reading this really is just to stick around the uh, traveling experience. As we travel, as we go through this pilgrimage, we learn about ourselves. You should be taking inventory of who you are. 
You should be taking inventory of what you do. You should be taking, you should be very self-critical. Apostle Paul always talks about being able to self-critique yourself and know what your strengths are and what your weaknesses are. Pay attention to them. If you don't know, ask somebody, right? Here in 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 12 says, Let no man despise thy youth, but be thou an example of, of, of the believers in word, in conversation, in charity, in spirit, in faith, in purity. Be an example. Till I come, give attendance to reading, to exhortation, to doctrine. Neglect not the gift that is in thee, which was given thee by prophecy. With the laying of hand, with the laying on of the hands of the presbytery, meditate on these things. Give thyself wholly to them, that thy profiting may appear to all. Take heed unto thyself. Pay attention to yourself, and unto the doctrine. Continue in them, for in doing this thou shalt uh, both save thyself and them that hear thee. Right. So as you go and you storing up these treasures in heaven, you saving yourself and them that hear thee. Right. That's that's a bigger reward for you. That's an even bigger reward for you. Right. Now, verse um, first Corinthians, chapter 12, verse one is talking about the use of spiritual gifts. When you when wisdom will, 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 will take you into a place to where you're utilizing your spiritual gifts to the highest extent possible. Right. It says, now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I would have, I would not have you ignorant, okay? I would not have you ignorant, okay? Now, skip it down to verse 4. It says, now there are diversities of gifts. There are different gifts, but the, but the same spirit. And there are differences of administrations, but the same Lord. And there are diversities of the operations, but, but it is the same most high which worketh all in all. But the manifestation of the spirit is given to every man to profit with all. So the most high, we all have, we're all dealing with the spirit, but it's manifesting and revealing itself through us in different ways. Right? For to one is given by the spirit the word of wisdom, to another the word of knowledge by the same spirit, to another faith by the same spirit, to another the gifts of healing by the same spirit. To another, the working of miracles. To another, prophecy. To another, discerning of spirits. To another, diverse kinds of tongues. To another, the interpretation of tongues. But with all these work of that one and self same spirit, dividing to every man severally as he will. Right? For as, for as the body is one and have many members, and all the members of that one body being many are one body, so also is Hamashiach. All right, so we all come in, we're all different parts of the body, we're all bringing different things uh, to the table, but we're maximizing what we have been given the gift for. What, are, what do you have an aptitude to do? What are you, what do you kind of naturally have a gift towards? As you study, as you get around the apostles and the others, as you do more and gain more experience, you should be paying attention to yourself to say, hey man, the spirit has really given me a spirit to. I'm really, this is this is my thing right here. It's okay to lean in on that bad boy. Lean in on that and really bring that to the table to help the body. There are certain brothers that they're really big on tinctures and, and health type stuff. Bring that to the table, man. Okay? Of course, we're going to still be, we all have our, you know, general duty. You know, and you're going to be reading, doing videos, doing your lessons. But we all have, you know, our certain gifts. You make sure to bring those gifts to the table. That's wise to do. That's wise to do. Okay? All right. So now I want to move on to this last point. This next point I really want to hinge on is, you know, there's three points that for the for the for the men that like to take notes that we want to talk about wisdom. We 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 talked about get understanding. The way that you get understanding is study to show yourself approved. And making sure that you sit at the feet of the the elders, right? So you get understanding by studying yourself, show yourself approved, reading, taking notes, listening to the different videos. Okay, making sure to get out there on our highways and byways, and make and then also iron sharpening iron, getting around the other brothers and chiefly the elders and men that have experience. Okay. The next thing you want to make sure that you know what you have the aptitude for. All right. 
making sure that you are expressing your spiritual gifts to the highest extent so you're bringing things to the table that are on point, right? And thirdly, ask for wisdom. Ask for wisdom. The Most High is going to put you into a situation. Goodness gracious. Right, so we want to make sure that we're asking wisdom. And, we, you know, our forefather Solomon showed this example here, Second Chronicles, first chapter 11, verse, and it says, and, and the Most High said to Solomon, because this was in thine heart, and thou asked, hast not asked uh, riches, wealth, or honor, nor the life of thine enemies, neither yet has asked long life, but has asked wisdom and knowledge for thyself, that thou mayest judge my people, over whom I have made thee king, wisdom and knowledge is granted unto thee, and I will give thee riches and wealth and honor, such as none of the kings that have been before thee, neither shall there any after thee have the like. You see that? And so because he asked for uh, wisdom and knowledge to judge the right amongst the people, all these blessings were, are, were part among King Solomon. Now, we, don't you think we should take that example? And make sure that, you know, when we lack wisdom that we ask, you know, but we have to believe. All right. James chapter one. Verse three says, knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience, but let patience have her perfect work, that ye may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. If any of you lack wisdom, if there's a situation where you don't know what to do. Let him ask of the Most High that give to all men liberally and abradeth not, and it shall be given him. But let him ask in faith nothing wavering. For he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea driven with the wind and tossed. For, for let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. So if you do lack anything, if you do come into a situation where you don't know uh, what to do necessarily, ask. Ask you how about Shimon Shah for wisdom. This is a chief attribute. This is a chief seed of greatness uh, within you. And this is a chief seed of greatness that's important. And, um, and to build this uh, kingdom, to, to build this ministry, this church, this house of David, man. So I just wanted to touch in on the mindset of the seed of wisdom that you allow it to kind of pour into your heart and take this and, and run with it whatever way. Please add comments or scripture on the comment board that might have come to mind. As I went through the this talk, Lord willing, it was edifying. Call Halal Yahweh, Bahashim Yahweh Shah, Bahashim Makar Kudash. Double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone. Much peace, love, and salutations to you. I came out there pushing the word sincerity and truth. Shalom.